It's judo and college wrestling coming up this weekend. We have Cody Brundage making a second appearance in the UFC after an unsuccessful short notice call up on a pay per view card when he took on Nick Maximov. Unfortunately for him, he came out on the losing end. He woke up that morning with Factory X in the background deciding, hey, I'm not a wrestler, I'm a kickboxer. And he kickboxed in that fight. He struggled a little bit with some of the wrestling. Maximov, ultimately a wet blanket, able to win the decision there. But luckily for Cody Brundage, he's taking on Dolce Lunjambula, who doesn't wrestle the way that Nick Maximov wrestles whatsoever. With Dolce, he has that judo pedigree. He was on the national team for Congo way back when for a few years in the old judoka and you love to see that out of Dolce Lundjambula we saw that in his fight in his last time out against Marc-Andre Barrio where it was a quick over the shoulder toss he was able to get now for Barrio to his credit he was able to get back up to his feet fairly easily but out of Dolce you're gonna see some of those attempts if we do see a clinch early on in the fight as the fight goes on that power bar starts to go down quite a bit, and that's where Dolce will tend to start to fade. But Dolce, what do we know about him? This guy, former EFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champion. How did Alain Badeau make out against him at light heavyweight with EFC? He went sleep, sleep, good night, sweet prince, and a guy who had a rough run in the UFC, one of the worst we've ever seen in the UFC's heavyweight Shit, division. Train Hamilton. But if we look at it for the man himself, Dolce Champion, in the UFC, it's been a weird mixed bag. I mean, he comes in, knocks out Daquan Townsend, beats him with the ground and pound. You love to see that. Lose to Magomed Ankalaev, where that head kick was on point. Beautiful. Then he beats Marcus Perez in a fight where, hey, Marcus, former LFA champion, so there's that. And then he goes out there and he loses to Mark andre Berrio. Again, for Brundage, a loss to William Knight where he's having success early. He's able to get the takedown and then ultimately ends up getting finished. He beats Joseph Cropshot over with LFA. And then he loses to Nick Maximov his last time out. Unanimous decision. Again, it's one of those fights you can kind of make an argument, but no, you can't. The tricky thing when you look at it, though, Dolce, champion from another organization, pedigree of competition, wasn't actually that bad for Cody Brundage. The combined opponent record outside of the UFC, 33 and 34. That also includes the two fights against Lozano, who was 13 and 15, and then 13 and 16 after he lost to Brundage the first time. So it is one of those fights, again, for Brundage, you're only going to get better having been a guy coming from the middle of the country, then moving your way over to Colorado Factory X. You're striking, your timing's only going to get better from going from Scorpion Fighting Systems over to Factory X. But again, his bread gets buttered with his wrestling. That's a tough ask against a guy like Dolce Linjambula. I, we disagree on this, and I know we do, so I'll just say it. I don't think Dolce Lujabula has the greatest judo for MMA at all times. I do think he struggles defending more wrestling-style takedowns. When guys try to take him down with the shoulders, with the top of the body, yeah, he looks really good. But you can single-leg Dolce in Agreed. an MMA fight. And... It's like it's not impossible to do and he doesn't have great cardio at all but I'll be honest I really thought Dolce was going to have a much better run in the UFC I know he came over a little bit older we might be critical of some of the guys that come over in their 30s making their UFC debut but I really did have higher hopes for Lunjambula because he does have that really unique combination of I'm a good offensive grappler I am kind of unique with my style of grappling and he does have phenomenal hand speed and power too especially early on in his fights but it just hasn't been the best run for him and I know earlier on in these prediction videos I made a point to talk a lot about the output of Tafan Shukwe. Lunchabula does kind of fall into that, where he'll have these minutes of inactivity in his fights where it's almost like he's waiting for his opponent to really open themselves up for him to land a big counter. And against someone like Cody Brundage, who is an improving striker, but I still wouldn't say he's at the level of someone like Dolce at this point in his career, it will be interesting to see if Dolce can land early on in the fight, because... This is a big step up in competition for Cody Brundage, and I'm glad that you brought up what his uh, combined record was of his opponents coming into the UFC, because it wasn't great. And for Dolce, like, not to say he's been there and he's done that, but like you said, he was a champion outside of the UFC. That means something. There's a certain level of confidence those fighters have coming over to the organization. But I do think stylistically, Cody Brundage has a very clear path to victory in this matchup. If he can weather that early storm from Dolce and really implement his wrestling, not even secure takedowns in the second and third round, but 
would just get Dolce's arms burn out in the clinch, I do really think Cody can have a lot of success the later this fight goes. Lunchambula, the former EFC lightweight, or sorry, light heavyweight, my goodness if he caught the lightweight, and heavyweight champ Cody Brundage, the reason I put my hand up, the former lights out middleweight and light heavyweight champion. You love to see it, especially when you have this fight coming up at middleweight. And obviously with Dolce Linjambula, he's taken the Jerry Cannoneer route of things from, well, it was light heavyweight, then heavyweight, and then back down to light heavyweight, and now to middleweight, where I guess you could say he's found a home, but where he hasn't necessarily found a home is a spot to train in the States. I mean, he trained out of Extreme Couture here recently. He had the Dewey Cooper connection, old no right-hand sleeve, loves it. And listen, the guy coached the champion now, so that's pretty cool in Francis Ngannou. But when I do look at it, he's training out of Sanford MMA for this camp. We talked about the picture before Marc-Andre Barrio's fight with Chidi and Joe Kouani, but Marc-Andre Barrio now training with Dolce Linjambula, so it. you do like to see that. But I do like that. I mean, with Dolce, you look at that fight against Barrio, and it's not just recency bias. It's a microcosm for the way his grappling works. It's the first over toss or, or toss over his shoulder. That's the first takedown he gets against Barrio. The second one, he grabs the arm, and as he's pushing Barrio back, he's got his other hand behind him, and then trips the lead leg and trips him down. So unorthodox takedowns that you don't see all the time in MMA from Dolce Linjambula, but from Brundage, we're going to work for a double leg. We're going to work for a single leg. We're going to work for those more traditional takedowns. Two-time NCAA D2 qualifier is Brundage. He has high school lineage in the wrestling as well. So when I look at this fight and the odds, Linjambula open. Well, they both opened at par. Linjambula now a plus 109. Brundage around a minus 128. And actually, I have those mixed up. When I look at the odds for this one, they open at par. Lunjambula, a minus 128 or thereabout. Cody Brandage, somewhere around a plus 105. If we have a look at the topology votes, I'm going to leave it up to a surprise. Lunjambula is the more well-known commodity, so I'm going to say over under 70% Dolce Lunjambula. I'll say under, but I think he's the favorite. The fans, wow. they know him. 504 total votes, 81% Lunjambula, 56% by knockout. For the 19% that have Brandage, 73% by decision. For Lunjambula, again, 2-2 two and two in the UFC for Brundage, the one fight against Nick Maximov. And uh, yeah, the last time we saw Brundage out, he was all about those sleeves on the lower half. The old ankle sleeves. What do you make of an ankle sleeve? Ah, uh, I never, like, uh, I played a lot of basketball growing up. I never wore any, like, shooting sleeves, any of that stuff. I thought it looked ridiculous. In grade 12, I guess I wore leggings under shorts because Kevin Durant did it, so I thought that looked kind of cool. Uh, so that would be my one experience with it. That's it. Did you have any cool hockey accessories? No, I have none. Here I wear mouth guard that's it but when it comes to this fight again Brundage brings that traditional wrestling it's something that Lunjambula can kind of have a hard time with I brought that up in the Marcus Perez fight and you may have said it was one of the dumbest things I've ever said on this channel I I just think it's kind of funny that now we have seen Lunjambula struggle with that type of wrestler but I will say this and I'm really glad you brought it up Marc-Andre Berrio is a more improved version of Cody Brundage. They fight in a similar manner, but I'd say Power Bar is kind of better at everything, and I know... That's uh, the least controversial thing ever. No, 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 but I, I know that's a hard hill to die on because of what he looked like in his last fight against Joe Kawani. He didn't look good at all in that fight, but I do think that him training with someone like Dolce and with him being a carbon copy almost of Cody Brundage is really going to help Dolce Champ in this matchup, but I will say this. I've got Lin Shambula, but he's going to drop the champion nickname it's like when jeff van gundy everyone calls him coach still is it like i know once a champ always a champ but like joanna doesn't go by it anymore for cody brandish nick maximo went four of 15 on his takedowns for nine minutes and 21 seconds of control in their last fight dolce linjambula does not grapple like that dolce what he will do he pumps a jab out there he doesn't throw a ton of kicks he stands heavy on his lead leg and he throws his right arm from an unorthodox angle it's not full extension overhand right it's like he kind of keeps it cocked and throws it so he's got to be in close proximity which is odd because he has a reach advantage in this fight so when you need to close the distance with a short overhand right which again go back and watch the bud o fight it's full extension in the overhand but lately what we've seen out of him is it's shorter bursts that could be a dewey cooper thing so we'll see what sanford does in this one I'm going with Cody Brandage in this fight to get the win as the underdog against Lin Jambula. I just think if he's able to implement some of those leg kicks, work in his wrestling, make this a gritty, boring fight, he should be able to cruise his way to a decision in this one. I mean, for Dolce, again, at 34, 
your 2007 all the way to 2009 Congolese national judoka. You love to see that, but for me, I, I like Brundage in this one ever so slightly as an underdog. I think Brundage can wrestle his way to a victory, but I do think he's going to struggle a lot with the striking early on in the fight. And I do think that if Dolce can get to an early enough lead, this is going to look similar to the Marcus Perez fight to where he can do enough damage early, defend some of those early takedown attempts, and it might not look pretty come second and third round, but he'll just be able to do enough to get by on the judges' scorecards. So I do like Dolce in this one. Middleweight and light heavyweight ooh they're in some type of a spot we're split on the pick i'm going with the underdog a brundage mat you're going with the champion to become a champion once more we'll see what happens coming up this weekend big time card nonetheless you're going to want to keep it locked in with fight and eight picks and as we always say let's, let's get, get into it, into it.